When did you realize that you wanted to spend your life playing music? Well, or, and like make that your, like your career and the whole thing? Well, I think seeing my daddy struggle, in the middle of it, I wanted to do it. Yeah. I thought, man, this guy is playing this stuff. Not that many people. It's got to be something about it. Mm. You know, he loved doing it. None of us loved it. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what it was. And there was only four or five of them. In New Orleans, man, it's everybody handkerchief head and just trying to be something the tourists want them to be. And in the middle of that, it's like four or five people really serious about playing for, for six people or 12 people or something. I think watching them, the integrity they had, I wanted to be. Then I started to listen to the music, John Coltrane. One night, my brother and I were looking at all of our records and all of our father's records, some kind of way we had them all on the floor. Now, we never would listen to his records, but we, we looked at ours, and it was like, you know, man, what could I tell you? Ohio players, honey, you know, I could go through the list of them. And we looked at his records. It was like people with suits on and stuff. We said, man, why daddy's records? People look like they're doing something intelligent, and all our records look like that. <laughs> so it was a Miles Davis record, and the, the woman was beautiful on the record. I said, man, let's put this record on. I was like 12 or 13. Someday my prince will come. I thought, yeah, that's okay. Put the John Coltrane record on, uh, Giant Steps. I said, man, this dude is playing on this record. And my father had a picture in our home of him standing with John Coltrane. I said, man, that's the dude that daddy and him standing with. Let's put this Coltrane on. Now, I knew who he was, but uh, because I didn't know his music, I didn't know who he was. And uh, I, I got into it for that, and I wanted to be dedicated. I wanted to learn how to play. I wanted to help kind of the musicians I, I knew. So at that point, because I had been around these musicians, and they were all struggling, it was him. So it's like the 70s, you know. I, I would meet the other musicians because they knew my father, Sonny Stitt, had an impact on me. Clark Terry, it doesn't matter. You could, I could name the list of musicians he played with. So that's, that's what got me into it. Now, we all come into the music in different ways. You know, some of us have uh, fathers and, and mothers that are musicians. Ted Nash and I have a similar familiar experience. Uh, Walter's father and mother, Elliot's father and mother played, so on and so forth. Uh, Paul's father plays, plays bass. It, it, we, all, we all have different ways, but Victor came into the music in a different way. And uh, we, we find a seriousness or a desire to do something at different times. I found it not because I thought you would get publicity doing it. As a matter of fact, I was sure you could not get publicity doing that. Because I had, so, had the example of my father who practiced, who was serious. He wasn't so much telling you to practice. He was going to practice. So if you didn't practice, you, okay. You sound sad. You don't practice. Don't be mad. <laughs> One thing you would always say, your sadness is based on the amount of practicing you're doing. Why are you sad? Because you don't practice. You will remain sad until you practice. Then you will become better, and maybe you go from sad to okay. <laughs> and it was never a big deal. You still, you still, my son. I love you. Not a bad person because you're sad. You just sad. <laughs> so your sadness was a matter of fact. It wasn't like something we're gonna negotiate or talk about. Well, you're sad. You can't play. Once I, I was talking about. He, he always wanted me to study with a New Orleans trumpet player named named Teddy Riley. They called him Buck. He said, "You call Buck? I never call Buck. Call Buck and learn how to play traditional music." Man, nobody want to play traditional music, all that skinning and grinning they're doing, man, call Buck, call Buck, I never call Buck. One day we sitting out at the table, he said, did you call Buck? No, man, I'm not calling Buck. Buck can't even read. He said, man, people can play or they can't play. You can read. <laughs> so, you know, because I had that type of example always around me, I was fortunate. I understood what it meant to be serious or not to be serious. 